everybody, welcome back to Raw Kids. I'm glad that you joined us today because we're gonna continue looking at the book of Psalms. But let's sing some songs first. I'm feeling good, good, good in a crazy way. God's love changed me more than I can say. I can't keep this in. I'm gonna let it out. I'm gonna tell the whole world that good love spinning. Let's sing together, I have decided mm -hmm. to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. He gives me hope for each new day. I'm gonna follow Jesus. He lights my path all along the Decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Gives me hope for each new day. I'm gonna follow Jesus. He lights my path all along the way. I'm gonna follow Jesus. And I will go wherever he leads. I'm gonna follow Jesus. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided
decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. No turning back, no turning back. No turning back, no turning back. Fantastic. That's fantastic. It's important that we make that uh, uh, called a declaration. I've decided to follow Jesus, and I'm not going to turn my back no, no. matter it's what a happens. Choice. Yes, we, that's we have right. To choose. That's right. It is a choice. Right. It is a choice. We do have to choose. That's exactly it. This is what it says to me. It tells me that I'm never ever alone. I'm wondering how J E S U S came down to earth and gave his best. Without a doubt, the best friend you'll ever know. Our God knows exactly what I need. So I'll remember this. Let's go! When you ask, he cares. And when you see, he's there. And when you knock, 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 God opens up the door. And when you ask, he cares. And when you see, he's there. And when you knock, 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 God opens up the door. I'm reading my B I B L E. This is what it says to me. It tells me that I'm never ever alone. I'm learning how J E S U S came down to earth and gave his best. Without a doubt, the best friend you'll ever know. Our God knows exactly what I need. So I'll remember this. Let's go. When you ask, he cares. And when you see, he Opens up the door, and when you ask, he cares, and when you see, he's there, and when you knock, 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 God opens up the door. And when you ask, he cares, and when you see, he's there, and when you knock, 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 God opens up the door, and when you ask, He cares, and when you see, He's there, and when you knock, 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 God opens up the door. Our God knows exactly what I need, so I'll remember this. Let's go! When you ask, He cares, and when you see, He's there. Opens up the door, and when you ask, he cares, and when you see, he's there. And when you knock, 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 God opens up the door. All right, well, we need to continue looking at the book of Psalms, but we gotta remember what we learned about last week first, don't we? Because we started in Psalm number one. Well, I had my purse up here last week and there were some things that I was pulling out to show you. Do you remember anything that was in there? Right, I have my wallet, because I don't like to leave home without my wallet, just in case I need some money for something. And what else did I have in there? I had my keys, because I don't like to leave without my keys. And I have my phone and some other things. But do you remember something I put in at the last minute that was really heavy? And something that I really shouldn't have put in because I ended up taking it back out again. Do you remember what that was? Those were my big heavy rocks called worry, weren't they? And remember I said sometimes I put some worries in 
before I leave the house? And God says, no, you don't need to carry those. So I had to take them out. Now, do you think worries are heavy? Sure they are. Because remember, I had those big rocks. And when I put all those rocks in my purse, it was really heavy. They're heavy like rocks. So should we carry those? No, they're too heavy for us to carry. That's why God says he'll carry them for us. Because they're super hairy. Or not hairy. They're super heavy. I mixed up heavy and carry. No, they're super heavy, aren't they? And do you think sometimes we forget and we carry them ourselves? We sure do. And you know what? You might be sitting there watching today and you might be going, yeah, I'm a little bit worried about this or I'm a little bit worried about that. And do you know what? You're carrying those heavy rocks and God wants to say, don't forget, I want to carry them for you. So think back just a few seconds ago. What was the book of the Bible again that we talked about? And we're going to look at again today. It's the one with the silent letter that it starts with. Do you remember? Right. It was the book of Psalms. And today we're going to look at Psalm 91. Last week we looked at Psalm 1, but today it's going to be Psalm 91. So get your Bibles. You should always have your Bibles when you watch Rock Kids because that way you can look things up. And if you have a highlighter, then you can highlight verses too. So you can go back and you can remember them. So we're going to look at verse 1 and 2 right now. So Psalm 91, 1 and 2. And this is what it says. It says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Who do you think is the Almighty? That's right, it's God. It says, you will rest in the shadow of God. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fort. He is my God and I trust in him. Wow. Now, here it talks about a fort. When the Bible talks about a fort, do you think they mean one that's like made out of blankets? Did you guys ever do that? You take the couch cushions and you take the blankets and sometimes you can take clothespins or other things or like books and you put the blankets on and you make a fort. Okay, I gotta go down a little bunny trail and tell you a story. When I was a kid, I remember going to my friend's house and we decided to make a fort. And so we made a fort with blankets in her family room and to make sure that the blankets stayed up for the roof all around the outside, we used some of her mom's like china ornaments. And I remember she had, I don't remember what it was, but it was big and it was brown. It was almost like a, it wasn't a barrel. I don't know what it was, but it was some decoration. Anyway, we put those on the blankets and then we were in the fort. And when we stood up, the blanket pulled away from the side and the ornament fell on the ground and crashed. I don't know if I was invited back after that. But anyway, so if you're making a fort, don't use ornaments to secure the blankets. Use like some clothespins. Anyway, the ones in the Bible where it talks about a fort or a fortress, it doesn't mean like blanket forts. It means like really big, strong forts ones that are made out of stone. Have a look at these pictures because I found some pictures of some really cool looking fortresses. Now, do you think that you would be safe inside one of these? Yeah, you sure would. Look at that stone. Nothing's going to get you. If there was suddenly a war and you were attacked and you were inside the, these fortresses, you would be fine. That's for sure. You wouldn't need to be afraid inside one of these. And that's what God's fortress is like. That's what you need to remember. So when the Bible says fort, doesn't mean a blanket fort. It means a fortress. All right, let's read this again. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is like a fort to me. He is my God and I trust in him. Now think back of all the Bible stories that you know. Who in the Bible do you think was ever afraid? Do you think there was anybody ever afraid in the Bible? Sure there was. Who can you think of? Hmm, let's see. Jonah, right. If you got swallowed by a whale, you'd probably be afraid. Who else might be afraid? What about Queen Esther? Remember when she had to appear before the king and she didn't know whether like he'd be happy or not? She must have been afraid. What about, let's see, who else was there? Right, Joseph. Joseph must have been afraid when he got sold into slavery. For sure, he would be afraid. What about David when he faced the giant? Do you think he was afraid? Oh yeah, because he was just, a, well, he was like a teenager, but he wasn't very big and he faced the giant. I would be super afraid. So when he went up against the giant, do you think he thought, yeah, I'm not doing this, I'm afraid. No, he trusted in God and he knew that God would be his fortress and God would look after him. And he went and he killed the giant and God helped him. Isn't that something? So God really helped him to fight against the giant. You have a look at this video and this will refresh your mind what happened with David. 
slapstick theater. David and Goliath. This is David. Hey! David was a shepherd who lived in Bethlehem. David was chosen by God to be the next king of Israel when he was just a boy. But David had to wait a very long time until that promise would come true because there was another king of Israel named Saul. Saul led the armies of Israel. One day, King Saul was with his army near the Valley of Ella. On the other side of this valley, the Philistines, the enemies of Israel, gathered their army ready to fight. The Philistines had a giant warrior named Goliath who challenged the Israelites. Hey! Goliath spoke badly of God and his people. He shouted and taunted them, saying, Choose one man to come down here and fight me. The Israelites and King Saul were very afraid. Meanwhile, David's father sent David to bring some food to his brothers and their captain. Goliath came out of the Philistines' army, and David heard him shout his usual mean taunts to the army of Israel. Whoa, what? As soon as the Israelites saw Goliath, they began to run away in fright. See ya. David asked, who is this Philistine anyway that he has allowed to defy the armies of the living God? David's questions were reported to King Saul, and the king sent for him. Uh, hi. David said, don't worry about this Philistine. I'll go fight him. Saul said, there's no way you can fight him and win. You're only a boy. Wait. But David told Saul that he had taken care of his father's sheep and rescued them from lions and bears. Then David declared, The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and bear will rescue me from this Philistine. So Saul said, All right, go ahead and may the Lord be with you. David picked up five smooth stones from a stream. Then, armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight Goliath. When Goliath saw him coming, he sneered at him and yelled bad things at David. But David said, You come to me with a sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of Heaven's armies. Goliath moved closer to attack, and David quickly ran out to meet him. He hurled a stone from his sling and hit Goliath in the forehead. The stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell to the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. But he knew the power of God and trusted God to win the battle against the giant. Do you know what's interesting? Psalm 91 was written by David. So what we just saw where David, when he was younger, went up and fought the giant and he learned that God was his fortress and God would always protect him and he doesn't need to be afraid. He was the one who then turned around and wrote Psalm 91. So he was able to say, God's my fortress and my protection because he lived it. He lived it when he killed the giant. All right, let's look a little bit more at Psalm 91. We're not gonna do the whole thing today. I'm gonna save some for next week, but I wanna do a little bit more. We'll do three down to eight, okay? This one says, surely God will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrows that fly in the day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Hmm, that sounds interesting, doesn't it? When you look at verse four, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings, you will find refuge. Kind of makes God sound like a chicken, doesn't it? God's not a chicken. That's just a way that um, David wanted to explain what it was like when God protects you. Have a look at these pictures here. What David is doing is he's comparing God to a mother chicken and how the chicks hide under the mother's wing. Isn't that cute? All you see is all these little legs sticking out from under the, the chicken's wing. So God wants to protect us 
but he also wants us to remember that he'll protect us. So we don't need to be afraid of anything because God will always look after us. He'll be like a fortress to us where we can go inside that huge stone castle and be protected. And he's like a mother chicken that will let, or I guess there's a mother chicken. There is only mother chickens, isn't there? Because there's not daddy chickens because they're roosters. Anyway, God is like the hen or the chicken that protects the babies under her wing. Well, I've got a game that I want to show you that you can play at home. So I took some balloons. So if you have some balloons at home and I want you to write things on your balloons. So I want you to write things that will help you when you're afraid. And I want you to write things that um, you're afraid of. So something that'll help you when you're afraid is singing to God. If you sing songs all about God's goodness, even about him being a fortress, that will remind you and that will really help you. But something you might be afraid of is failing a test. So you're going to have a whole bunch of balloons, a bunch that say things we're afraid of, and a bunch that say things that will help us. And what you're going to do is you're going to mix them all up on the floor, and you're going to have two teams. So say your family has four people. You could have two people on one side and two people on the other and make a line down the center and put half the balloons on one side and half the balloons on the other. And then what I want you to do, you have to ask your mom first, is take little pieces of tape and just put them somewhere so that you can tape the balloons to the wall. So what you're going to do is on the count of three, you're going to run and you're going to start grabbing balloons. And if they say something that'll help you when you're afraid, you tape it to the wall. If it says something that you're afraid of, you throw it on the other team's side. And at the end, whoever has the most balloons on their side of the wall wins the game. So it helps you figure out things that we're afraid of and things that will help us when we're afraid. So that might be a fun game to do as a family. All right, you guys. Well, I want to pray for you, and we're going to talk about fear a little bit more next week. So I've got a challenge for you. Can you read Psalm 91 this week? If you're really keen, you can read it every day. It's not very long. It's only, let's see, 16 verses. You could do that. Why don't you read it every day so it gets inside your spirit? And if you can't read it every day, just read it a couple times, and you'll remember how God's supposed to be our fortress and how he's supposed to be a chicken that we hide under his wings and how um, just God will really help us. And then we're going to finish Psalm 91 next week. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for the kids today. I thank you, Lord, that you are our fortress, that you want to cover us with your wings and protect us. And I pray that wherever they are this week, that they will remember to always, always hide in you and that they never need to be afraid. So, Father, I bless them today, and I pray that you'd help them with their fears. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys. See you next week.